What's up? This is Josh Gilbert, and I'm here hanging out with Rob from punkvideosrock.com. New band, promoting all over again. Like, what's that like for you? Uh, I mean, for us, you know, we feel like though we are starting all over again as far as, you know, new music, new band name, uh, all that new record and stuff, we still have the support of a lot of our old fans, you know, from our previous band and uh, our previous bands, I should say. And uh, as much as it is starting over again, it definitely means a lot to us that there's already like built in support there that maybe like a brand new band wouldn't have. Now, let's talk about the new record that just dropped and, you know, coming into this record, new singer. So what what was it like in the studio and what was it like as far as the writing process? Um, it was really easy. You know, we got together a little like about a month or two after everything went down and started jamming again and came up with over a couple of weeks, maybe five or six demos that we were stoked on and kind of were sending around. And uh, one of the first people we thought of was Shane and we sent him some of the songs to see what he would think of them. And uh, he kind of gravitated towards some and not as much towards others and uh we just he finally came out to california and within a couple days we had vocals for the first song Mm -hmm. sent it to the other guys in the band and uh to metal blade and everybody was into it and it was really that easy like there was no tryouts there was no like uh process it just kind of happened and just the domino effect now as far as as far as like making sure that it's not like another like as i lay dying type music you know, how was that? How, how were you able to make it into a new style of music, like obviously a new band? Well, I think if you pay attention to the sort of riffs that were in before and a lot of the riffs that are on the new record, it's pretty obvious that some of the same writers were involved. Mm-hmm. But um, I think with this, we let the dynamic of all five people kind of judge uh, what the, the music we were writing. Once we had Shane in the picture, we kind of uh, had more of a, you know, we had more of an idea of what the music needed to sound like and how it would complement uh, Shane's voice and my voice and just the kind of riffs that we had the best. And that's pretty much how we wrote it. I don't think we went into it with any clear uh, plan to deviate from the, yeah. what Asley Dying sounded like. It just naturally happened that way. And, and, you know, listening to the record, it's a solid record, but I do notice that it's not as aggressive. So is that like the direction that we can expect from you guys um, with this new project? Well, I think for us, it's it's like a different type of aggression. With Azalea Dying, it was a lot of, uh, you know, 220 beats per minute, per minute, the entire song, balls to the wall the whole time. Mm-hmm. And we weren't really able to experiment with the dynamics of it. But with this band, you know, we were able to, uh, you know, sort of take it down a notch for certain sections and build back up to, to other things that while maybe they aren't, quite as metal or aggressive as 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 Lee dying they definitely they definitely um come across just as powerfully just in a different way okay and as far as guitars now your singer uh actually plays guitar as well so uh when recording for guitars you know how did you guys figure out uh what was being played where well you know we we wrote we were all we all write the guitar parts you know and um when we were writing the demos, you know, like there's a few songs that I wrote the guitar parts on and there's a few songs that Shane wrote and then every Nick and Phil all wrote songs. And I think, you know, a lot of the time, like we're, we've always layered things as far back as the band, as, as the previous band has gone to, like we have always layered and, you know, certain times there's three or four guitar parts going on. And in the past, you know, live, those parts would have to kind of suffer and we'd have to pick the most important two and just hope that it came across but with this new band there's definitely room to be able to just play all three of the layers that are going on and not have to do you know a lot of bands put stuff on like music on tracks and stuff but with guitars we don't have to do that and it's really cool to be able to you know the dudes go into a harmonized guitar solo and then Shane's still holding down the rhythm or vice versa you know Shane takes a couple of the leads too it's pretty cool and now you guys you guys recorded with the same producer you guys have been working with Um, so was it any different working with him this time since it was a different project I would say the main difference like the instrumental recording process was really similar I would say the the main difference was the vocal tracking because before you know I I sang a, a lot less than I do mm-hmm. and then Shane does in this band and um so when we were doing the record with Bill with Azalea dying it was kind of like oh you know we're gonna we have a couple of days at the end we'll do all the singing vocals but uh with this it was I want to say like 17 days straight of you know we track bass for a couple hours a day but then me and Shane would just alternate 
doing vocals until we lost our voices every day, basically. And he builds the kind of guy that will literally make you do one line 35 times Dang. just to get the exact emotion and like clear enunciation that he wants. And that's, you know, something that's infuriating at the time. And you just want to like rip your hair out. I don't have hair, but like I want to rip my beard out. But he uh, definitely beat us up pretty bad. You know, by the end of it, we were ready to get out of there. But I think it translated to really cool vocal takes on the record. Yeah. Now, you did mention earlier that when you sent the, the sample tracks to uh, the label uh, Metal Blade, um, they did like it. But I mean, before that, I mean, when you guys presented the idea of this new band and the name of the band and what it would entail and who would be in the, in the band, uh, what were their reaction to that? Well, believe it or not, um, before we had talked about anything, before Metal Blade knew we were even going to be jamming again or, or working on music again, Brian Slagle uh, drove down to San Diego when we were had all met and uh, we had dinner with him and he just let us know like let that whatever if we move forward if we don't whatever like Metal Blade's going to be behind us and that they'll always be there to support us so it was really cool and like pretty uh, liberating you just writing the record and knowing like we're going to be able to do like a proper production of this record and Metal Blade's behind it no matter what it is nice. and, you know bands don't usually stick around with the same label forever and uh, you know you guys have had longevity with Metal Blade so how how is it that you guys were able to make that happen um, I don't know we've just always had a really good relationship with those guys like they're the the probably one of the most hands-on labels that I know of like I just from talking to other bands that I know like they they love to be a part of everything that we do and you know they, they definitely they're they're at the video shoots they're you know they're gonna be here tonight at our shows to see how it's coming across live and they they all always are offering input and you know they truly do care about the bands that they have on there and I think that's the reason why we stay with them and um, that's pretty much it when, when listening to the record again you know one of the songs uh father son that's the softest song on the record can you tell me a little bit about that song and why you guys chose to put it in that record you know it was just a song I, like if I'm not mistaken I think it was like a 10 year old riff that Nick had written maybe and, and Shane sort of took it and took it out of a swing feel and put it in more into 4-4 type groove and uh one day Shane just sort of, short, uh, sort of started riffing on it and, you know, programmed some stuff for it. And, and that's why it kind of, I think, took more of an electronic tinge at the beginning. And it eventually, you know, morphs into full band. But uh, it was just a really cool concept, I thought, for lyrics and, and everything. And uh, when we were finally sequencing the record, it definitely felt cool to put it right in the middle as a kind of breath of fresh air and, like, you know, a little break from, like, getting pummeled by riffs the whole time so it, and it also makes the second half of the record kind of introduced with i think profane starts right after that so it's like is it that right i think okay yeah sounds right yeah so yeah it, <laughs> profane comes in and it, it feels really heavy after that song and 15 tracks on this record uh did you guys just was it something that you guys just were like let's do it you know all out or like is there a certain reason why you went 15 instead of the normal 10 to 12 you know we when we first we finally got Shane, you know, we'd had some demos, but a few of them we kind of just scrapped because it definitely wasn't going to fit the vibe that we were, we had gotten, you know, with All Rise, which I think was the first song we had all the vocals for. Mm -hmm. So we uh, started just writing a ton, you know, everybody was contributing a lot and like sending in demos and we were checking them out and uh, we couldn't decide which ones we, like before we were going to record, like we were thinking like, let's do like 12, mm -hmm. but um you know 10 to 12 but then we couldn't decide which one we didn't want to record and so we just recorded all of them but when it came time to like make cuts for the final record i think we all kind of looked at it as you know this was sort of a snapshot of where our heads were when we were writing for this yeah. and uh so to if we didn't include one of those songs it probably wouldn't make sense to like put it as a b-side later because i feel like we're you know it's such a new thing that we're still feeling that like creative uh, you know reinvention of the band so I think that once you know it's time to write again we're not going to want to explore the stuff that we wrote two years ago we want to just write new stuff so to, to, at least my reasoning for wanting all the songs on there is just so that it's kind of like that's that's what we wrote together that's every song that we wrote that we didn't leave anything out I'm touching base on on the live show um, now how, like I mentioned uh, the singer plays guitar as well and then you're starting to sing a little bit more um, what is that like for you guys now um, for your live show uh, well I mean I can't really be 
around the stage quite as much as I used to be. Like I can't really run around quite as much because I'm at the mic, you know, almost as much as Shane because we, we actually do all the harmonies live that are on the record. So it's for me, at least I'm a lot more stationary, but it's also cool because I can focus more on just like playing and singing. And uh, I mean, it definitely it, it becomes more of a routine for us because just like right now, I was trying to find one of the other guys to do this interview so I wouldn't have to talk for 15 minutes. But uh, it's it's something like I got sick on the last tour and and in the past, maybe it wouldn't have been such a like a, a huge blow to my performance because I was only singing, you know, a couple of lines per song for like, you know, seven or eight songs. But now it's like, OK, we're playing the entire record and singing every harmony on it and also talking all day. And you just have to really keep up with your health and warming up and drinking tea and water and all that stuff. So it's it's definitely more of a responsibility now, but it's also, you know, it's a lot more rewarding, I think, you know, when we get off stage and we're like, man, we really like did the songs justice tonight. And at then and at the same time it's also a lot more disheartening when your voice isn't working with you. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I had bronchitis last week and a couple of the sets really bummed me out. But uh Luckily, it feels good today. I think I'm, I think I'm good. So, <laughs> yeah, we're here to watch you. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed, we'll be all right. So last month I, I hung out with Miss Mayai and I was talking to, to them because initially they had quoted As I Lay Dying as one of their like favorite bands, um, and I had mentioned about the new project, and they did mention that you guys have been talking about certain things. Is there anything you can elaborate as far as that? Oh, uh, you, you mean as far as like tours or something? Yeah. Oh, well, there there's nothing uh, like officially discussed i mean that would be great we love those guys we'd love to go on tour with them there's nothing that's actually been discussed i don't think but we're good friends with those guys and i think we would love to tour together so that would be great maybe they know something i don't yeah (laughs) so lastly uh, what else is is next after this tour you guys are doing europe and then what else uh we go to europe for about two and a half weeks just to hit some of the bigger festivals like Reading and leeds and pukul pop and we're doing a few headline shows with of mice and men over there then we're back home for almost a month then we head back to europe for about six and a half weeks within flames and while she sleeps